the most perfect divine self-awakening to the domain of conscious light. Taken from the Eletheon, Volume 6, the divine avataric self-revelation of his divine presence, Avatar Adidas Samraj. 1. The perfect practice of the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam or Adidam Rishiradam, which is the one and only by me revealed and by me given radical reality way of the heart, is a process of, ent of an entirely non egoic nature. It is a process in depth. It is always taking place at an in-depth level. It is always taking place at the level of consciousness itself. There is not anything deeper. There is no deeper than that to go. The only by me revealed and given process of the perfect practice takes place in the domain of consciousness itself, moment to moment, always in the perfect practice of the reality way of Adidam, there is always this in-depth process prior to the patterning of ego eye. That process is most profound in the relative repose of the formal setting of perfect contemplation. But the same process also continues in the myths of activity. The only by me revealed and given perfect practice of the reality of Adidam always already stands prior to and beyond the limitations of the first six or developmental stages of life. The reality way of Adidam is a process wherein most ultimately there is awakening beyond the first six stages of life to the seventh stage of life, the most ultimate stage of life, the divinely self-awakened stage of life in which there is no egoic limitation whatsoever, no limitation at any level, gross, subtle or causal, no egoity at all, no pattern of egoity effective at any level whatsoever. The seventh stage realisation is utterly non-dependent, inherent in reality itself, Therefore, the seventh, realize, seventh stage realization is most fundamental. When I speak of the seventh stage of life as beyond the sixth stage of life, and my own reality teaching and divine avataric sub revelation as beyond the sixth stage of life, I am talking not merely about the seventh stage of life standing beyond the practices the philosophies and the culture traditionally associated with the sixth stage of life. Rather, I am talking about the seventh stage of life, standing beyond the limit on realisation that is inherent in the sixth stage of life. Whatever particular approach may traditionally be made, to the sixth stage of life. The mode of samadhi or realization possible in the sixth stage of life is approached from different directions in various branches of the great tradition of humankind. But inherent in all those approaches is a particular limit or error that is characteristic of the sixth stage of life itself. And that limit is shown most particularly 
not merely in the philosophy and the practices associated with the sixth stage of life, but in the realization that is traditionally regarded as the fulfillment of the sixth stage of life. In other words, there is an inherent limitation even in Janana Nirvikalpa Samadhi, as it may be potentially but necessarily conditionally realized in the traditional context of the sixth stage of life. If the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adi Dam, the characteristic samadhis are of a non conditional and transcendental spiritual nature, unique to my divine avataric self revelation and my avatarically self transmitted divine transcendental spiritual gift. Priorly self abiding Janana Nirvikalpa Samadhi which is prior self-abiding in the egoless root context of Atmanadi, is the culmination of the perfect practice in its horizontal dimension. Non-conditionally self-abiding Janana Nirvikalpa Samadhi is a prerequisite for the subsequent priorly ascended Nirvikalpa Samadhi which is prior self-abiding in the egoless and non-conditionally regenerated context of Atmanadi and thus egoless self-abiding prior to all necessarily conditional modes of yogic descent and ascent in the context of the body-mind self. Priorly and thus non-conditionally Ascended Nirvikarpi Samadhi is the culmination of the perfect practice in its vertical dimension. The coincidence of both priorly self abiding Janana Nirvikarpi Nirvikarpa Samadhi and priorly ascended Nirvikarpa Samadhi, or the perfect transcendental spiritual self establishment of the totality of Atmanadi in both its horizontal and its vertical dimensions is the prerequisite or the necessary context for the only by me revealed and given seventh stage awakening. The seventh stage awakening is prior to and beyond the final barrier to perfect knowledge of reality itself. The barrier for the psychophysically enacted presumption of difference. Thus, the seventh stage awakening is prior to and beyond the barrier of the non-recognizability of the world and the illusion of ego-based presumption that the world is not self. In the traditional process of practice in the course of the first six stages of life, one of the fundamental philosophical principles that is generally instilled in people is that the world is not self. Traditional practitioners go through a great deal of self-discipline in order to get out of the habit of thinking that they are the world. To get out of the habit of such literal worldliness, they work very hard to achieve a position of strategic detachment, a position in which by feeling detached from the world, they feel no longer bound to the world, no longer driven by desires for things of the world. This position of strategic and therefore egoic detachment makes it possible for such traditional practice practitioners to enter into a six-stage mode of introversion and samadhi, a mode that is intended to go beyond all that is presumed to be not-self. However, no matter how profound the conditional six-stage samadhi becomes, it is none, nevertheless a samadhi that is complicated by the presumption that there is such a thing as 
not self. Thus, in the traditional samadhi of the sixth stage of life, there was a limit on realization, a limit on happiness. Indeed, happiness itself may be part of the not self that is left behind in the traditional sixth stage practitioner's effort to go beyond not self. This is the reason why some traditional sixth stage dispositions are rather grim. The point of attention pressed up against an infinite, infinitely dense mass of nothingness. In some traditional sixth stage practices, one is dashed against that nothingness so profoundly that the point of attention is fractured uniformly over the entire surface of a nothingness that covers all. Such traditional approaches to the practice of the sixth stage of life have, in a few exceedingly rare cases, led to the realization of sixth stage, Sahaja Navikalpa Samadhi. However, the awakening that characterizes the seventh stage of life stands entirely prior to and beyond even the limitation of sixth stage Sahaja Navikalpa Samadhi. Your real situation is non egoic. Your real situation is prior to and beyond the point of view based persona of the waking state and that of the dreaming state and that of the sleeping state. Your real situation is a domain of consciousness itself, the domain of that which is always already the case, no matter what arises and whether or not anything arises. That condition, the self if you like, is beginningless and endless and always already the case. Surely that is truly self with a capital S. No mere conditional persona or ego I is true self-consciousness itself, is true self. Only that is true self. Only that is the true self-position, the true self-nature, the true self-condition and the true self-state of reality itself. In the history of the great tradition of humankind, the true self has characteristically been thought of as the self over against something else. Whatever that something else may be, presumed to be, the world or the body or whatever, it is necessarily identified as the not-self. This categorization of reality into self and not-self is the fundamental basis for dualistic thinking or dualistic presumption. In the history of the great tradition of humankind, the true self has characteristically been thought of as the self over against something else. Whatever that something else may be presumed to be, the world or the body or whatever, it is necessarily identified as the not-self. This categorization of reality into self and not-self is the fundamental basis for dualistic thinking or dualistic presumptions. The nature of consciousness itself must be found out, must be realized because that is your real position. Likewise, the nature of all apparent objects must be found out because you are inevitably associated with apparent objects. 
if you examine anything that you would describe as object to you, following it down to its depth level, or through a chain of causation, or however you may like to think about it, eventually it is found to be light or energy, whatever that is. Light or energy is a single something, a force, a kind of radiation. You cannot reduce an object any further than that. Similarly, if you go within yourself, examining all the layers of your own you description, entering into the in-depth mind, and so on, when you get to the root of you, there is consciousness, and you cannot go any further than that. You cannot reduce the subjective you any further than that. You cannot break consciousness up into parts. It is just what it is. And the same is true of energy or light. No matter how you examine energy, there is no basis for dividing it. Thus all objects that you examine turn out to be energy itself, and all subjective inwardness entered into leads you to consciousness itself. Therefore, there are two great factors discoverable by investigations, energy itself and consciousness itself. They seem to be different from one another because you have taken the point of view position of the body mind self. On the one hand, you have entered into the interior of the body mind self, and on the other hand, you are constantly moving outward from the interior toward what appears to be exterior or in relation to the body mind self. And in your examination of interior and exterior, you have not taken a single route, or have you? In any case, when you examine the apparently subjective interior and the apparently objective exterior, you came to the conclusion that one was self and the other was not self, and ultimately this investigation leads to the conclusion that interior or not self is consciousness and, exter and exterior or not self is energy. But consciousness is the basis of your examination and consideration and judgment of both interior and exterior, both self and not self. In other words, even that which is identified as not self is something you know in the domain of consciousness. Thus the not self is something you know and in that sense the not self is consciousness. So how can it be not self? If existence is presumed to be divided into you and objects, then that which is ex then that which is experienced is presumed to be not you, not self, which is the nature of experience, as described by apparently individual be beings. Such is not, in truth, the nature of reality, but beings experience their lives as if the nature of reality were such. And why is that the case, since reality is otherwise? Why is it that the common experience of beings does not correspond to the actual nature of reality? Devotee, why do we first presume separation between self and not self? Adida, why are you speaking? The single persisting factor whether you are waking, dreaming or sleeping, is consciousness itself. With respect to anything arising, 
Consciousness itself is in the position of the mere witness, not the position of attention, but the position of mere witness. In the three common states of waking, dreaming and sleeping, everything is object to consciousness. Everything. You are equipped with faculties of bodily, emotional, mental and psychic awareness whereby certain kinds of psychophysical objects are known. But even these apparently subjective faculties are objects to consciousness. Even attention itself is object to consciousness. Consciousness stands as the mere witness. Therefore consciousness is not the faculties over against the objects. To summarise this matter once again, in your usual mode of thinking as the social persona, there is what is outside the in, there is what is inside the body mind complex, and there is something and there is everything outside the body mind complex. The inside is I and the outside is not I. But if you examine your actual position most profoundly, you discover that even the body-mind complex is something relative to which you are simply the mere witness. Therefore, the body-mind complex is not you, just as none of the conditions observed or noticed or perceived by the body-mind complex are you. Thoughts are object to you. They arise and you notice them with attention. Anything that arises to attention is an object of attention. You are that which is on the other side of attention, somehow opposite to objects it seems, because you are on the other side of attention rather than in the sphere of the objects of attention. That apparent opposition inevitably suggests that consciousness does not exist in a domain of objects that consciousness exists only in the interior realm of attention. From the point of view of the sixth stage of life, consciousness is on the interior side of attention. From the point of view of the sixth stage of life, consciousness is a domain that necessarily excludes the world or the objects of attention. And therefore, the traditional six-stage effort is to enter into the domain of consciousness in that characteristic world-excluding manner. Precisely because of the inability to divinely self-recognize the objects of attention. In general, you presume that the objects of attention are not self, unless the objects of attention is the body-mind self, in which case you say that it is self. But in neither case is your presumption true. No matter what arises, you do not know what it is. What it is. You can say all kinds of things about it. You can investigate it on and on and on. You can even say it is light but you still do not know what it is. The knowing is not the knowing of the is part. It is just knowing about the objective, observable whatever. You do not know what any thing is. So what is it? You are not in a position to inspect its, its existence. You can inspect everything else, or, to state it differently, you are not in a position to inspect its consciousness. You are in a position to inspect everything else. You are in a position to inspect signs that suggest there may be consciousness. But you cannot inspect the consciousness objectively, and therefore you cannot prove it. When the habits associated with the binding of attention 
till the body mind self are gone beyond. Then the perfect practice of the reality way of Adidam begins. The perfect practice is practice in the domain of consciousness itself, the domain of reality itself, entered into prior to and beyond the point of view of difference. However, because the domain of consciousness itself is beyond the world, when traditional practitioners enter into that domain in the dissociatively introversive six-stage manner of conditional janana, nirvikalpa, samadhi, there ceases to be any direct association with the world. All such dissociation from the world must be gone beyond. Most ultimately, the world must be accounted for in the disposition of the most in-depth realisation of consciousness itself. But in the context of the first six stages of life, as soon as there is waking or dreaming, in other words, as soon as there is association with attention and its faculties of body-mind, the position of consciousness is lost. In the context of the first six stages of life, then, it is either one or the other, the body-mind complex or the in-depth, but not both. In the traditional context of the sixth stage of life, there can be a kind of in-depth while in association with the body-mind complex, a kind of equanimity, a kind of samadhi, in the traditional context, six stage Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi is possible. Nevertheless, self abiding as consciousness merely unperturbed in the traditional six stage manner is not the same as self abiding as consciousness and self recognizing the world as such in the only by me revealed and given seventh stage of life, seventh stage manner. The world cannot, in and as itself, be divinely self-recognized as consciousness, because the world is not a something, except at the level of energy. Therefore, it is energy that must be divinely self-recognized as consciousness. The world must be recognised as energy, and energy must be divinely self-recognised as consciousness. Therefore, it is not in the domain of the world excluding introversion on consciousness in the traditional manner of the sixth stage of life that the seventh stage realisation takes place. The seventh stage realisation is awakening in and to the domain of energy and consciousness, the domain of conscious light. Thus, in the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam, the perfect practice is entirely a transcendental spiritual process. The only by me revealed and given perfect practice is entered by a transcendental spiritual practice. The perfect practice itself is a transcendental spiritual process and the fulfilment of the perfect practice in the only by me revealed and given seventh stage of realization is a transcendental spiritual divine self awakening. Therefore, the seventh stage awakening is not merely a philosophized manner, philosophical manner not merely an exercise of mind or an exercise of ideas, such that you are conceptually convinced that it is justifiable to identify with the consciousness principle and even to interpret his, it, it as being the absolute. Merely thinking about consciousness in such terms is not sufficient. There must be realisation by virtue of most profound, intrinsically ego-transcending practice of the domain of consciousness itself, 
the domain that is beyond the gross ego and the subtle ego and the causal ego.